Hello, and welcome to Sex Signals. Sex Signals is an engaging, exciting, and thought-provoking presentation that opens up the conversation around sexual assault prevention. Yeah, I like to describe Sex Signals as not just a presentation, but it's actually kind of a theatrical experience. It's a show, really, uh, with two educators in front of at most 400 students. But it's the conversation with those students. They drive the conversation. Using improvisation, audience engagement, and research-inspired scenarios, Sex Signals prides itself on being a truly interactive program, enlightening the way audiences think about consent, bystander intervention, and the power that they have to create safer communities. There have been over 10,000 performances of Sex Signals since the year 2000, and we've been so lucky to watch that conversation evolve from our audiences. Through several semi-improvisational scenes, a duo of highly trained educators takes the audience on a relevant and captivating exploration of the tensions and misconceptions often found in dating and sex. <laughs> Each program and conversation is customized to fit that particular college and audience. The program builds equity with the audience through facilitated conversations and lighthearted scenes to invite the audience in, so that later, when consent, alcohol, and sexual assault are discussed, the audience likes and trusts the presenters. We have them rank all, we have like about 25 to 30 different activities during orientations. Actually rank sex signals as the top five most helpful and engaging experiences. You know, it was so interactive, it was so engaging that, you know, it was the total opposite of just like a presentation where you're being, students are being lectured at. Bringing in sex signals kind of sets the precedent of like, this is something that we're going to invest in because it matters to, to our community. The program begins with a lively conversation between the educators and the audience to lay some groundwork and familiarity. The educators gather knowledge about that particular group of students to incorporate into what ends up being a highly energetic and often hilarious improvised scene about the wildness of dating um, in college. What are some stereotypes that y'all have heard about sex and college? Yeah. Everyone's just doing it all the time. Everyone's doing it. There's no time for studying, only sex, unless you're studying for sex, right? Yeah. Um, but for those that maybe did get some kind of sex ed, let's talk about what are some things that were discussed or that were learned. Yeah. STDs. STDs and STIs. We the learned alphabet. about those. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah, over here. Uh, like condoms. Maybe talking about condoms, safe yes. sex. So we're gonna do three different themes today, talking about consent, how we can support survivors of sexual violence, and how we can all build a community that keeps each other safe. But what are those stereotypes that we've heard about people's genders relating to their sexual activity? Like how are men and women supposed to act when it comes to sex? Men are supposed to go get sex constantly, which tells us that sex is specifically for one gender when it's that's not true. The stereotypes about women are just as messed up. It's like damned if you do, damned if you don't. When a woman has sex, what does she get called? Slut. Slut. Oh. Whore. Whore. Oh. Easy. Oh. We also have stereotypes about queer and gender non-conforming and trans and non-binary folks. All the folks in the LGBTQIA community, Thank don't you. we? Do you think sometimes these folks get left out of this conversation? If a woman is sexually assaulted, do you all think that oftentimes she will get blamed for it? Yeah. yeah. I think this whole conversation is just more complicated than these people are good and those people are bad, right? It's about behavior. The second scenario goes in depth on how to create a boundary and what it might look like when someone tries to cross it. <laughs> It's going to be about two friends who've gotten to know each other in the dorms who may or may not buy into those stereotypes that we've been talking about. Did you say that um, your roommate was coming back? Because I could definitely do another game. Uh, I don't know. He said he might be going to another party. Crazy night. So, uh, you say, want to go round two? <laughs> I can go as many rounds as you want. Stamina, baby. <laughs> so are you like interested in anybody else? Yeah. We're, we're friends. We vibe. I mean, like we're, we're both sexual people. I'm just not interested. I'm. Wow, okay. The final scenario puts a bystander in the hot seat, depicting how to identify when something has crossed the line into sexual assault or sexual violence. The educators perform the scenario 
and give the audience a chance to ask any questions they have to gain more information. This is followed by an in-depth conversation about what we can all do to not only be good bystanders, but good upstanders in our communities. Uh, based on the information I have, a student came forward and accused the host of the party of rape. She reported it first to campus administration, uh, but not to the police. How long have you known him? Uh, over a year. I moved into the apartments my sophomore year, and he threw this badass party that night. We've been friends ever since. Uh, do you throw these parties often? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> what makes them so great? Uh, we only let the hot girls in. We always make sure there are more girls than guys because no one wants a sausage fest. Um, we never run out of drinks, and the music's always on point. What do you mean by wingman duty? Uh, like keep the girl's drink full, make sure she doesn't leave early, make sure no one else hits on her. Parker says, like, make her feel like a VIP. Did you see either of them again that night? Uh, to be honest, I had to get a burrito in me, so I bounced. But I did get a, a text from Parker the next morning. It was a picture of Bree asleep in his bed. I asked him how it went. He said he totally hit that. Um, okay, do you mind if I ask the audience if they have any questions? Yeah, let's go here. How drunk was Bree? Yeah, I also want to know more about the alcohol. How drunk was Bree? I mean, I, I wasn't counting her drinks, I'm not her parent, but like she went shot for shot with a couple of people and she was playing beer pong and she's really bad at beer pong, so she got, she was pretty drunk by the end of the night. Parker wasn't really drinking because we have a rule that the host of the party doesn't really drink just in case someone shows up to stop the party. How many more questions are there? Just two. Do you think that your friend Parker raped Bree that night? And do you think you helped him? Um, I gotta stop. Uh, I have some things to think about. Okay, Dylan. And, and scene! Oh. Um, let's give it up for my friend Michael there, y'all. You're part of this community. These are things that can make it safer, better, healthier, happier, more inclusive. So we can speak about these concepts in a way that is um, approachable, right? I, I think just the, the approachable nature of it gave students permission to show up and like hear it if that makes sense like they were not just listening during that <laughs> like during that performance they were like hearing In reality this conversation will keep evolving based on what these students bring to us this subject matter changes to meet the moment and the way that it impacts each of us differently and the way that it impacts each of our communities and campuses differently and that's what's the most fun about it is ultimately we walk away every time we get to do this show feeling empowered having had laughed together and knowing that our audiences will keep that conversation going <laughs>